Hi everyone and welcome to Real Politic. This is a very, very special episode. This is our Eye on Ilford special in which we will be on the ground in Ilford South. Okay, admittedly the host of this particular episode, Geraint, and I have not actually been to Ilford South in the course of this campaign, but our operatives certainly have. We've got a lot of treats in store for you today, all of which should get to, once again, they should cut to the bone, the hard truth of what is happening on the political scene, especially in the bellwether seat of Ilford. South, that is. Joe Swinson's in her 30s. Right, we're doing streets of fear on the right. Just a question of where is the easiest place to park. And given this traffic queue, I don't want to go anywhere near this. The time is 10 p.m. the evening after I met Mike Gapes. Mike Gapes. Leafleting right now. Sam Terry leaflets everywhere, but Mike is not fussed. We went to start at 10. It took him about an hour to actually get going. I don't know what kind of campaign he thinks he's running, but it's all good. It's a beautiful cold day. When he first walked in, he cut a quite tragic figure. It's a cold morning and he is an old man. But then he comes alive when he gets out his phone and he gets onto Twitter and he starts tweeting Jeremy Corbyn. Listen to this. Listen to what he said now. One, th- I wanted to like get to know a bit about you as a person and one thing that I really noticed this morning is you seemed like you did almost come alive when you were started tweeting <laughs> Corbyn. Um, it does, is that something you particularly enjoy? Online interaction? I, I've always been a... I, I, I control my own Twitter feed. I don't yes, know I spoke to Jack that. about that. Yeah, Jack puts stuff up on Facebook for me and yeah. pictures on Instagram and so on. Mm. But I, I don't let anybody else do the tweets. <laughs> the tweets are all me. Those are all certified Mike. Yeah. And is that something you, you I, like I've to? been active on Twitter for a long time, and I got into a lot of Twitter fights in the night, about five years ago, four years ago. Um, I, I just think it's important that nonsense is called out. Yeah. And um, on foreign policy issues, there is so much nonsense put out on Twitter, um, in particular. We honestly wasted so much time because Mike wouldn't get up because he was on Twitter and he was composing a tweet to Corbyn about Bosnia and other places we've bombed and that worked out really well because we bombed them. There's about like five people in the office being like, Mike, can we go leafleting? He's like, I'm trolling Corbyn. Leafleting with Mike's campaign manager right now, just me and him. If Sam Terry wins in this area... I've not got my mind. I'm looking for a No worries. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day, sir. I've spent half an hour in this man's company, and I have to say I am now a committed gapes head. Iraq was a good thing, actually. And I, I think that is his overriding ideology, actually, so that's the only thing that's really changed, in my opinions. Even as a Labour candidate, he faced strong opposition from members in the area. Mainly that comes down to his support of the Iraq war, right. and his belief that, yes, it didn't go as it should have. I think we can all, you know, we all acknowledge that. But there are things out of it which were good. You know, Saddam Hussein who was butchering and murdering his own people, the removal of him wasn't necessarily the worst thing. That's another subject. But he's a, he's a laugh. He loves to troll Corbyn. He comes in in the morning and he comes alive when he's trolling Corbyn. The little smile on that man's face. Adorable. Our level of convinced people Jeremy Corbyn is the leader now for Ireland. He has been leader now for Ireland. This guy is a very nice guy. No, he is. Mike is a very nice guy. If you have seen today, I should have telling my peace of mind. I don't want to lose my vote because I don't know Sam, but because Sam is standing on the table. But you do. I have no choice. Well, no, but you do. I don't have no choice. Mike has been Mike has been with Labour for fifty years. He didn't change. He's no, still me, Labour. Me, is, one, if you cut him one. open, he's still Labour. No, no, no. Let me tell you one. He's a Labour Party. What we need is Labour government. And how do we get Labour government? With this division? Well, you're not going to see what, what, Mike why supporting... Why are you, you, you making life difficult is, for no, no, Labour? No, 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 no. This Labour is the thing. You, Labour I agree. Party. I agree that this area is a strong Labour well, area. I'll lie to you. However, you can still get Labour values with Mike, but what you've got is an independent person no, who can no. fight... It cannot, for it cannot happen, because it's going to count, because we are, we are bounding on these seats. 
yeah. that's going to go for labor and plus this seat. You can why, why are you targeting all the labor's whole seats? We're not. This is one seat. This, this is, is one seat. This is, this, is, this, is, this is my opinion about all these things. If we tell the other guy to step down, He's not, he's not this gonna, he's this not guy should stand on the label because I will not allow this to happen. I mean, we can't. He, Mike, Mike has made clear that on a number of issues, there's issues over foreign policy, there's issues over Brexit. Jeremy Corbyn's leadership has changed the party. We would argue for the worse. No. And unfortunately, he's read. You know, if you want to vote yes. Labour, you can vote Labour. Definitely, definitely. But I would, I would urge you, I would urge you to this, in this house, we yeah. have four votes. I would urge you to labor. look. Richard Miller claiming to be you. Yes. You are Richard Miller. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm not. We don't even know. We don't know who, what, Richard Miller is or isn't. Which is entirely to the point. We've never met him. Mike has never had anyone even... <laughs> Do you think he lives around here? I, it wouldn't, he could live here, he could live in Russia. I have no <laughs> idea. It's, it could just as easily be, you know, like say, a bot, a troll. We don't know. And um, regardless of whether they're real or not, the more important point is that this is someone spreading... Do you think it's illegal? What he suggested is illegal. It's election fraud. Oh, was that the, the thing about the, postal the, votes? The, the, yeah, the postal vote tweet... To do that, a candidate cannot touch a postal vote. That is election. That would be breaking election law. And it's, you know, that's a, that's a serious crime. So to put that kind of thing onto social media, you know, it got put up on that as well. That's a serious thing, and there are people out there. But no one's going to think that seriously, Mike, who's a long-standing MP, is going to be like, <laughs> send me your. But I, I, there are, in this area. We have a, a lot of people who say, for example, that's true, I in their first language, and that's something true. like that. Or maybe if just it's their first time voting, something like that. There are many ways in which people could be lulled into a false sense of security. That's Especially true. Especially if someone is off Twitter claiming to be from his campaign. Yes, there are lots of... How long did it take Twitter to deal with it? Well, like I say, the account has been up there for a good few months, but it's never really done anything serious. It's just been a silly parody my complaint when he started making these more serious tweets that, like I say, kind of broke election law. He did complain, and nothing was done. To our knowledge, it wasn't until Michael Crick intervened that Twitter finally did that. But, you know, unfortunately, Mike's had this issue along the way. Of he's had a lot of abuse, a lot of trolling, things like that, that go beyond the realm of disagreeing over policy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a whole silly saga, but, unfortunately, that's the world we, we live in. Makes you wonder if they're that concerned about one little race in Ilford, then what are they doing at a national level? You know, oh, Back when he was driving, he was very meek again. He's reversing and he couldn't see exactly what was going on. Instead of asking me in the back seat to like have a look, he just said, I can't see. I, I can't see. And I was like, uh. I'll have a look for you. You're fine, mate. Reverse. My understanding, I wasn't involved at this time. I can only do this from what I, you know, gather myself. But the actual, in terms of people targeting him, I know one big thing come down to this this whole milk comment. He got up in Parliament and he's making a point about Brexit, yeah. about how milk crosses the border in Northern Ireland, and it was taken. And you have the milk that is taken from cows in the south and taken from cows in the north, put together in the same factory, and then it is mixed together with whiskey, and it comes out as milk. You know, fine, maybe it could have been put across the other way, but the point was true. Absolutely, yeah. And it got picked up by these kind of like university students who had no time on their hands, I suppose and different people who are mocking it and parodying it. And it's for me, at least, now I could be wrong, but for me, that seems to be a point where he, where he ter- transformed into a meme. And some people have just not forgotten that. And I don't know how they do it in terms of having these fake bot accounts and things like that, but it's almost like if you can create a bot account that literally just responds to Mike Gapes' tweets with pictures of milk. They would do that. They have, they've probably done that. It's, it's just bizarre. I, I just don't get I, it. I, I think Tim Farron might have had a similar milk thing before. Maybe when Mike started talking about milk and mm. everyone was already taking the piss out of Tim Farron for milk, it kind of just transferred over. I don't really know. I really don't. I really don't know. But it, I think it was difficult when we started going out onto the streets 
Mm. You go out expecting potentially that the, the people on the streets are going to react in the same way as that Twitter lot do. You spend so long, because I run marks like Facebook and Instagram, he has full control of Twitter, but I run the other two. On the whole, they're fairly neutral, positive-ish type things, but still, you get, you get the abuse. They have to pack away at the weekend and then do stuff out of people's cars. Oh, it just pains me to see people struggling. They clearly are, like, doing their best under trying circumstances, but it's like, you're fucked, guys, give it up. You've been beaten. Sam Terry probably mobilises loads of people at the weekend and doesn't have to pack away all his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Who has? This, it's a group of young men, and I'm not sure where, I think we're somewhere... I was reminded it because you said... or Leeds <laughs> or somewhere, but they, they've got a podcast, and this podcast features me and few other people, and they've got this obsession uh, with a speech that I gave in Parliament where I was talking about the Irish border and that there were farms with fields which crossed the border. And right. so there were farmers who had cows which were in the north and cows that were in the south. And, then, and, then, yeah. and, I made the, and then I said, and, and then they milk the cows in the north and they milk the cows in the south, and they mix the milk together, <laughs> they send it off to the factory and it comes out as milk. And I made this little speech, and it went viral. <laughs> and uh, it was picked up by the Daily Mirror, and people, really? people liked it, because it, it made a point about the integration of the Irish economy. But then these people started doing it as the, they called me Milk Gapes. <laughs> Um, um, I think I think if you've got an hour long podcast about yourself, then well, it's more than one. <laughs> oh, really? There's a, there's a there whole. Is, there's s- a whole group. Right, group, group that, yeah. Jack, take this with. There is a whole group of young men who haven't got a lot to do in things. <laughs> <laughs> who are in between doing things. Yeah. Yeah. And they, 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 they do. Um, they, I don't know how many followers they've got. Last time I looked, it was like about fifty. But but they <laughs> they got they they spend hours and hours so doing weekly somewhere. podcasts on politics where they sit in some room, probably drunk, rambling and recording it. And, and in the middle of it, there's all these little extracts of me and other people. And They're now suspended. Oh, oh really, yeah. right. They've had to, and as a Were they to do with the Richard Miller? No, I, I mean, I can tell you. Oh, that's, okay. Well, that's the bit I was saying to you before. The whole Richard Miller thing is, who knows, it could be real, it could be fake, it doesn't, uh-huh. you know, it's that. But just as a further example, I suppose, it's like, like so they've now been suspended and they have bought... The domain name of mygapes.co.uk, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which redirects you to their podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Actually, no. I did see about that. I didn't know about that one going to a podcast, but I did see that one goes to Sam Tarry's website. I mean, that doesn't surprise me either. But I don't know if that's the same people. That's a very typical political thing to do. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's why Donald Trump buys hundreds of domain names to stop people redirecting you to stupid things and stuff like that. If you've got the money. If you've got the money. Mm. You know, Donald Trump. Um, yeah, so I accidentally stole a hat that says, I'm keeping my gapes on it. They also have high vis that say the same thing on the back in big letters. I wrote this pamphlet in 1990 for the Fabian Society after the um, Berlin Wall opened. And, and, um, and, I, and I wrote this um, uh, 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 few, The Future of the Alliances, or I can't even remember the full title of it, but I wrote this little pamphlet. You know, and that was in 1990, nearly 30 years ago. About a year ago, they produced this uh, podcast of these guys reading it out in funny voices, <laughs> pretending to be me. That is dada. That's this, modern art. And this, and this, 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 this broadcast was about half an hour long. I didn't <laughs> listen to all of it. I just skimmed through to the end. And, but it was basically reading out my pamphlet. Oh, wow. You know, I, I mean, that is just... Kind of, do, you have a, do you have a copy of that pamphlet uh, anymore? I, do, I still have two copies of the pamphlet, yeah, at home. Who did they buy it off? I, I, no, well, it's, you, you can get it, because it's, um, it's, it's, it's got ISBN number, so it's, uh, you can find it. Oh. Uh, you know, if you go to libraries... So they're or, sort of supporting you, is that the idea? No, 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 no. Uh, no, they have an obsession... Uh, it's not support. It's weird. It's like saying, okay. no, no. I just like, asked. I, I, so it's really. Yeah. No, it's yeah. just weird. It's just like you know, pe- 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 they've got particular people they obviously focus on, and they Photoshop them into weird pictures and various. Oh things. yeah, yeah. They did one. They did one thing of like, like I was the evil genius at the centre of the world, yes. and I, now my head's uh, in the middle, and there's all these other characters 
<laughs> revolving around me. You know, all, all sort of uh, Mao Zedong and Mandelson and... We, you know, oh, right. I, I, I can't, you know, I'm not a psychoanalysist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, with, with respect to Rupert and Jack Present, there's some people with a lot of time on their hands oh, right. who are looking yeah. for some pretty weird stuff to do yeah. online. Yeah. You know, where's yeah. it going? Yeah. 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 People used to get all these weird letters sent to them in green ink. Green ink. And people yeah. would write on the envelopes, and you, you'd know if you got one of those, come to your office, it would have inside it photocopied pages of the Daily Mail and, uh, yeah. and, 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 and with, with, with handwriting up the side and all the way around. And, yeah. You know, you used to regularly as an MP, you yeah, get absolutely. you'd get letters like oh, that every. Do every not get that so. anymore. It's been replaced. I do occasionally, but not very often. Normally, now they come as emails. There's a guy who emails me every week about the Illuminati yeah. and, and their plots for the wow. world. Wow. And the spam filter in Parliament takes out a lot of that stuff. Mm. The art of the green ink letters dying. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but the keyboard keyboard warriors. Yeah, so it's been replaced by something you probably written last year. It's gone to a much darker world. These mm. aren't people that are necessarily just not well. These are people that... Well, we are going to have to regulate the internet. Mm. There is... I've got somebody working on a model now. They have no fucking data... So they're just leafleting constantly and then just walking up and down the high street and letting Mike shake people's hands or letting Mike shake people's hands outside primary schools. So, Mike, it's your first election as an independent, is that correct? Yes. And um, how's it going so far? It's going very well. Um, I've been really amazed by, you know, the warmth, the positivity and just hope that that will translate into the support on the, on the, on the actual vote. Yeah. But I don't know. It's well, so hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. I've got no data to measure that. If you'd been an independent for a five-year parliament, then maybe you could have got some data, but it's no, no, just all no, been well, so well, crazy. Well, when I left the Labour Party, I was not allowed to have any, yeah, yeah, any data of, of any kind whatsoever. So... Yeah. As a result, it's a different kind of campaign. Yeah. Today is the 2nd of December. Yes. Do we want to hazard a guess at what's going to happen? What's, what are we going to look like on the, on the 13th? Uh, colder, darker, <laughs> uh, darker, less daylight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, who's going to be sitting in number 10? I still hope yeah. that we can stop Johnson getting a majority. Yeah, but it's I think, possible. I think that partly depends on Scotland. Yeah. Um, I, my prediction is Labour are going to lose seats, some seats. The Lib Dems might win a few more than they've got. I'm hoping that there will be no overall majority, that the Parliament will still be able to stop them. Um, a, a crashing out with no deal at the end of next year, which is yeah. still a big risk. Yeah. So you have really, I think, there was controversy over that real Labour values leaflet, but I think you're demonstrating exactly that by standing as an independent now, because you haven't done what someone like Shukar Amuna or Luciana Berger, which was decide to join the Liberal Democrats. What was it that more than you... that, more than that, I haven't gone on a chicken run. Yeah, I have stayed with this community, mm. which oh, I yes, am proud course. to have represented. And even if I lose, mm -hmm. I will, because of the warmth that I've had on the street, I will know that there are lots of people here who are, are, are pleased that I've been their MP and that I've worked with them over the years. So as far as I'm concerned, win or lose, I would never have gone anywhere else. Yeah. And I was certainly not to join the Liberal Democrats. Yeah. I'm not a Liberal Democrat. No, no. Uh, I'm a Social Democrat, and uh, yeah. I, you know, in the in the in the Labour tradition. Yeah. If you ask a lot of people who maybe don't pay too much attention, if they were to say why you left the Labour Party, it'd be anti-Semitism and Brexit. But three issues. Yeah. For me. And the other one. Policies. Well, I was going to say the other one that for I think me, a lot of people. Very important. For a me. lot of people don't pick up on that sometimes. No, but maybe. for me, yeah. I was chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. I'm a foreign policy person. I mm -hmm. was the head of the Labour Party's international department. I'm an internationalist, yeah. and I believe in humanitarian intervention, yeah. and I believe in the, um, the, the standing up to bullies mm. and not allowing authoritarians and, 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 and horrible regimes to have a free pass. And, uh, and, and that's why I have so much difficulty with Corbyn and those around him, uh, people like Seamus Milne, all the all the Putin apologists and acolytes, and I, 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 I you know, for me that 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 was a very important reason as to why I can't stand 
and to put Corbyn in number 10. That's exactly what I was thinking about. I mean, I think I've got this correct because I was involved, I know Fareed Ahmed, oh, I knew him. He stood here in 2017, is that right? The Liberal Democrat. But I think, I think they, they basically were struggling to find people to put up, I think. They fucking hate the Lib Dems, which is great. Well, they ran virtually a paper candidate. Exactly. They didn't put any literature out. Which they, really begs the question. Last time they got 1.3% lost yeah. their deposit. Yeah. Time before they got 2%. And even with the Nick Clegg euphoria, they only became a very poor third. So they, they, they've got no councillors, they've got no organisational base. Exactly. And as far as I can see, I haven't seen any of their literature, if there is any. Um, Which begs the question why they didn't stand down for a Remain candidate who had a chance of winning. Well, I suspect it, it's a combination of the fact that they are generally not standing down for... No, they're not generally um, right. They've done this deal with the Greens, yeah. implied, yeah. but it's limited. And apart from Dominic Grieve and Anna Subri, as far as I'm aware, the Lib Dems are running against, well, maybe Gavin Shuka, but apart from that, they're running against Chris Leslie, they're running against me, they're running against David Gork, they're running, uh, you know. It looks like they're, they're, their little scheme with the Greens and the Applied Cymru, it looks like they've done very well out of it. The Liberal Democrats seem to be the ones who are really going to be the ones that stand to benefit. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, because the Greens haven't got the base anywhere, no. really, to win any seats. And did you, like have any communication with the Dems or were they just very much from the word go not no, they, interested? No, they didn't contact us at yeah. all and Anna Subri spoke I know with Joe Swinson right. and said this is absurd why are you standing against Chris Leslie uh, and Mike Gates yeah. and uh, as far as I know uh, Joe Swinson said oh, I'll see what I can do ah. um, and they clearly did nothing Yeah. so uh, my, uh. My, my, my take on it is that um, they wanted to have a number of candidates, paper candidates, nationally, so that they they could keep up their numbers. Yeah. And given that they're not putting any resources into it, they're not really running a campaign of any sort. Doesn't here. cost anything, does it? Um, you know, and the fact that they may take f- uh, several percent of the vote and therefore have a Corbynista in, well, it's presumably because Joe Swinson would r- r- would rather have a Corbynista than a a mainstream centre left voice who might be an ideological challenge to yeah. the Hellenist party. Yeah. No, I. I think Joe does seem now that pe- people have <coughs> kind of got an idea of Joe recently. They might have been thinking. She has uh, been a bit cynical with some of her politics recently, and that might well, be. Well, the, what's this, going on. Um, the, the, the revoke thing has backfired on them very badly. Yeah. And even Vince Cable the other day admitted that. Yeah. It was a tactical, gross tactical error. Mm. And to kind of start your campaign off by saying, if we get a Liberal Democrat government, now, you know, realistically... It reminds everyone was, that there won't be one. You know, well, you know it's quite clear now they've, they've shifted tack. They're now fighting a, a defensive battle to keep the MPs that they've currently got, including the ones who've changed party. I made lots of other notes, but the, a lot of them are, like, getting to be quite empathetic because I started to like them. I just felt very, very, very sorry for them. I think with Twitter, there's a kind of a... Almost like a... Is it a bot culture where yeah. people are... Pretending yeah. to be yeah. somewhere yeah. that they're not. The Iranians, the uh, Russians, far-right Americans, all engage in this Twitter warfare. And many of these accounts are all linked. And they, they, they put out the same kind of stuff in the early hours of the morning. And you can tell they aren't genuine people. Right. You know. Yeah. So I tend to block all those. I, I think I last checked, I had about 43,000 followers, but I've, but I've blocked about 1,500 people or, or accounts. They're not real people. And, and uh, there are all these fake accounts as well. And the, the par- so-called parody accounts. Yes. Yes, so those parodies is something that I spoke to Jack about because obviously I only heard about this kind of after it kind of happened. Yeah. But Jack was parodied. Jack's your campaign manager. Yeah, and then someone right. was... Someone That's called right. Richard Miller was pretending yeah, well, to be Jack. It's been reported to the police. And we reported it to the police, and Twitter did take the account down. Okay. Eventually. Jack mentioned that that was after Michael Crick kind of highlighted it. That's right, this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Michael Crick phoned me up. I didn't know anything about it. Really? Um, Michael, well, I'd seen this account and asked Twitter to take it down. Right. And they hadn't done so. But then Michael Crick contacted me and said that the account was claiming that um, Corbynistas were handling postal votes 
and if you want your postal votes secured, give them to me. And that, of course, that is, is very criminal dangerous. offense. Yeah. So I immediately, when, I, when Michael Crick told me that, I made absolutely clear, I don't know who this person is, but secondly, we reported it to the police, and Twitter then took the account down. Right. That's good that they and finally I hope, took action. And I hope this person, whoever it is, using the name Richard Miller, I hope they, they get investigated by the police. And the, they may well do, yeah. Yeah, well, I hope so. And there are people, there are people on Twitter now, I think, because I had a look at it, who knows how much you can trust these things, but they're saying that Richard's disappeared. <laughs> do you think that's... Do you think you that's... Disappeared? Do you think that's more of I don't know if he even existed, ever. Who can say with these wild, wild people... Anyway, we'll call it a day. Thank you so much, Mike. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it just pains me to see people struggling.